Welcome to the Heartland Running Podcast. Join Crystal, Andy, and Stephen as they explore all things running related in the Heartland and beyond. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. I'm Crystal. Oh, wait. It's just Crystal tonight. We have kicked the boys out of the clubhouse, and it is an all-girls episode tonight. First time ever. And my co-host that's with me tonight is the one and only Tiny Debo, Denise Barasa. Welcome, Denise. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you. And thank the boys for um, stepping aside for us girls tonight. Yes, I said, I'm not quite sure if they've stepped aside because one, they are either um, really intimidated by you or, (laughs) or I think they're hoping that they were going to be sitting back braiding each other's hair, having tickle fights. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. I don't know. Pillows. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. No, we're going to be talking about hauling ass and kicking ass. That's right. Getting dirty. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, don't get them started. I know, right? I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> on the trails, come on. Get That's right, out. absolutely. Well, we uh, we had the pleasure of uh, meeting Denise briefly um, at Run Under the Stars <laughs> earlier this month, and uh, she was an absolute machine. She won the women's race and set a new course record with 66 miles in the 10 hours. Um, and what was even cooler than that was just two weeks earlier, she was in Costa Rica and won the North Face Endurance Challenge 80K. So that's kind of cool. You know, I was kind of thinking the same. <laughs> I was not sure. <laughs> I'm, serious. I'm like, I had no idea what was this 10-hour race. Had never run one before. And yeah, just like you said, I was two weeks out of um, a mountain uh, 80K uh, that was really quite humid and challenged me pretty deeply. And so... Again, um, stepping into this race called Run Under the Stars. Um, wow, it was it was exciting. It was fun, and it was it was um, a lot of loops around that track. <laughs> <laughs> what made you decide to do it? I mean, it's so different from what you normally do, and from what I saw, it didn't really seem to be appearing on any of your you know projected race calendars. Uh, you you absolutely nailed it on the head. Um, I was in Costa Rica and my boyfriend, James Lambert, goes by Frenchy Run, um, was, he sent me this little snapshot of, he just registered for this, <clears throat> this, this run, this 10 hour run, ruts, as it's so called. Yes. And it didn't take me more than <laughs> maybe an hour before I shot him back a link of my registration. Uh. And, you know, I didn't even, I don't even know why I did it. I hadn't even run uh, the North Face Endurance Challenge yet. This was the day before. And I'm like, oh, you know, 10 hours around a, a half a mile track. It was more spontaneous than thought through. That's what I'm going to go with. <laughs> That's awesome. And so I just registered for it. And um, I have Vermont coming up in three weeks. And so, you know, I'm oh. kind of looking in my mind. I'm like, oh, this could be just a good training run. Maybe I won't be, you're not assuming I'm going to be recovered. No assumptions, just, it could be just a good training run. Um, and then it just turned into a, more than a training run. And I was super fortunate to, you know, as you said, you know, get the course record and the win and have a good day. So still have Vermont in three weeks. So, but yeah, that's how it came about. It was completely, completely not on the calendar, not even, um, a, there was no seed in my mind at any point. It was my boyfriend saying, Hey, look what I'm going to do. <laughs> and I thought, Oh, I could run it with him too. So we're doing loops. I could see him the entire time. This isn't one of those races you take off and, you know, you kiss whomever, see you later, pat on the butt, what, and you're off. This was one where I was like, Oh, I'm kind of intrigued by this. I actually would get him. So Kind of well, and that's that's what was everybody else. Well, and that's what I was gonna say. That was one of the things I loved about it because I had the chance to run with you for about you know three seconds at a time. Um, oh, but yeah. <laughs> but that's what I love about looped courses, and I've done some before. Is that there's no front of the pack, no back of the pack. You're kind of it's one big continuous party, and it's a lot of fun. Until yep, I would say right until that clock just you know, that clock that just never ends until it finally ends. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Well, one of my favorite stories from that night actually involves you. It was near the beginning of the the night because it was still it was still light out. We're running along and and I was right near. I think there were two or three guys running together. People were still kind of bunched up and you were coming trucking along and you were looking (laughs) great. And you just have this like sparkle and glow about you. It's so much fun. 
and they see you booking it behind them and they're like, um, you're, you're not supposed to go past us. And you just kind of laugh and they're like, no, 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 we're, we're the pacers. You got to stay, you, you know, you got to be behind us. And you just kind of laughed, went past them and said, oh, don't That's worry. Right. We'll be again. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. I, mean, I kind of figured I might be probably was presumptuous. I might have had some karma that could have had something bad go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. No, but it worked. And it was just, yeah. No, it's, and it was just so much fun, even as the night went on and stuff. And you were just so encouraging and, you know, just high five to everybody and making us all all feel good. So that was, that was kind of fun. Again, that's what I like about the loop course, because out on any other course, I would never have um, seen you. <laughs> No. And I, you know, that's, I told James, I'm like, you know, um, typically there's 50% of the time I'll listen to music. And for whatever reason, I decided this was going to be a a different type of challenge for me. And I was in, I was looking forward to it. And I decided, you know, I'm not even going to bring music. And at one point I was like, why didn't I bring music? (laughs) And, you know, it it was, it was beautiful that I had the company of all of these people, you know, whether it's the front of the pack or the back of the pack, the middle of the pack, I was with everybody all night long. And, you know, the part of me that wanted the music was just to kind of get the thought of, you know, I had, I had come into the aid station at one point and I stopped and I was eating something and some gals there were asking me. So we're just trying to figure out what you're doing, what you're thinking about when you're running around the track. Are you like, you know, world peace, you know, mathematical equations? What are you thinking about? And I'm just like, you know, I am trying to just have a blank of mind, <laughs> just continue running and doing the same exact thing. And music is actually something that's kind of nice when you're, you know, it just kind of allows you to just kind of settle in and just relax the mind. It's almost, you know, therapeutic and running without music is just that also you can get to these places where as you're running, it's, I don't know. I, it, it's tough to describe, but you just enter. It's the zone you can go into and you can just keep going there and you can stay there for a long, obviously long periods of time. But again, having the ability to see other people out there versus other races where I can spend hours and hours by myself um, is just, it was amazing. It was like the very first time I've ever experienced that. So it was pretty incredible. And yeah, everybody was amazing. They were so encouraging. I mean, I can't even tell you, I would pass people and I wondered, it's like, do they know that I can hear them? They're like, oh, she's a beast. Look at her go. It's like, oh, it's like, oh thanks, guys. You know, oh, she's still going. Oh, it was so awesome to see because you just looked great from like beginning to end. It was very cool. Thanks. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. But yeah, no, um, that's my first experience. And um, I would recommend that just for people who want to have the company. I mean, you're going to be with people. You're not going to be by yourself. You're not going to be isolated. It's super safe. You're not going to get lost. <laughs> you're, you That's know, a good all one. Those factors that can come up in other ultra distances. And this is one where, you know, you can just check box, I don't know, a good five of them off the list, you know, and, of not even need to worry about. Oh, it's awesome. Um, I saw one of your, I don't know if it was a Facebook post or it was something, but you, you talked about, you know, the race was great, but of course you had highs and lows you know, during the race, which is to be expected when you're running for 10 hours is were the lows different than you would normally have, like in your mountain races or some of the real technical trail races, or are they still kind of the same and how you deal with them? Is it the same? You know, um, that's a great question because when I think about my lows for this race, it's, it, this race is super unique in that it's not like you can DNF it. You can right. stop and not run as far, but you can't not finish because as as soon as you start it, you you can start and finish and be done with your segment and that's that. And so it was one of those, you know, it's like I was feeling good. And so I'm like, okay, well, I'm just going to run this pace. I'm definitely ahead of the pace that I, you know, I thought if I have a good day, I would definitely consider that course record. So I knew my splits of what I needed. Um, if I was going to run faster than that, I knew what my splits were for that. If I were slower, then obviously I'd be slower than either of those. <laughs> and, you know, about halfway to five hours in, I was like, you know, phew, I'm getting tired. And I did, you know, in my mind, it's kind of that I did just race two weeks ago. Okay, right. right? So you have that little <laughs> thought going on. Um, then other ultras is, you know, I had the consideration of, I, I had some goals that were based on um distances that were set by other people. And 
you know, it was, it was, it kind of came down to, you know, I'm basically racing myself. Do I want to go for it or do I not want to go for it? And it's kind of a weird phenomenon. The further you get into a race or even a training run, have you ever had those runs, Crystal, where you're out there and you're like, oh, you know, I don't even think I can go one mile. And you get oh, yeah. three miles in and you're like, okay, and th- maybe this day you need to do 20 or 15 or 10. And each subsequent mile you go further, you're able to go further. But at the beginning, you would have doubted that you could have even finished the first mile. <laughs> oh, yeah, that makes and total so- sense. Yeah. And I've had runs like yeah. that where you have, you know, 20 something on the calendar and you're like, I'm not even going to make it to five. And so you, yeah, you get there. And then sometimes those are some of the best runs you end up having. Yeah. And yeah. And they're incremental and you work your, your mind, your mental strength. It's not the body. Typically it's the mind. Maybe the body's a little tired. Not that you have an injury. It's just, you're just not feeling very strong that day. And you're just kind of tired. And you're just like, okay, well, you know what? Five could be good and get to your five. And like, oh, okay. I can go a little further. And next thing you know, you've got your 20 done. And just like you said, it's a better run than you've had on previous days. This race was one of those. This was one of those where I'm like, got halfway, you know, I'm like still feeling pretty good starting to get tired, was having to hit the bathroom a few more times than I kind of liked. And I was like, you know, there's nothing wrong. I could just do 50 miles. I did 50 miles last week, 50 miles this week. would, You know, two weeks later is just perfectly fine. I started making those little compromises mentally, but yet I was still running. And then <laughs> I did 50 miles and, you know, I started running with, I want to say Bob, the guy who won it. He and mm-hmm. I started running together and we were at Oh, shoot, I don't even know. It was more laps than miles at this point. I was at lap 89 and he showed up and I'm like, oh, where'd you come from? He's like, oh, well, you know, I was feeling tired. I put my legs up and I got to the point where he said he was going to stop again. Well, he didn't stop again. And I picked my pace up and he kind of brought me out of that little lull. And, you know, it, again, I kind of worked through that point in which, you know, I was starting to make you know, concessions for why maybe I do something different than try to go for the course record. And, you know, anyways, each mile I further I went, I just kept going. And, you know, even when I hit 63, I was told it's like, oh, you know, Steve Durbin was like, Denise, you only need one more mile or one more lap. I'm like, well, why would you stop at 63 and a half? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then James was there with my dog, which was amazing. So we we're doing like, okay, well, let's do one more. And James was like, well, if we do, you know, one more, we can get 66. And at one point, um, Bob came by and he was like, Denise, um, so do you feel like three more? Because I want to hit 70. And I'm like, you know, I kind of kicked it back to an 11 mini. So I'm just kind of good where I am. <laughs> so, <laughs> it, I mean, it was, it was weird. It was like, you know, even when I hit, you know, you know, 63, 64, I could have pushed harder. But already then I was like, okay, I'm good. I'm good. I've got the course record, got the win. I don't need a, you know, I can run and finish with my boyfriend and my dog. And yeah, so different than ultra distances that don't do this type of lapped course as well as timed is there's no DNF. And it's a lot different with not having the mountains, not having a lot of, you know, our weather was warm, but it wasn't bad at all. Um, You have an aid station every mile if you have something set set up or no I'm sorry every half mile yeah. and if you have something set up that's every quarter mile which I did and it was yeah I mean it was it's just a completely different type of ultra race very enjoyable and yet incredibly challenged just different types of challenge more mental than it is physical the physical side that is a little more difficult is just that same um, muscle group that you're using all 10 out yeah Mountains, you have the hiking and the walking because it's required, because you're not going to be able to run up the mountain. Um, this race, you know, just as you saw, you know, you're just quads just so tired. And it's that, you know, it's still a hard surface and it's still the same motion. It's not the road, but it's 10 hours of the same motion on a hard surface. Did you feel more beat up after this one compared to to like a, a trail race of the same distance? You know, I actually did. And I wondered, you know, part of me was like, you know, so having to back to back, But I also think just the pounding in the same type of motion had my quads really sore. My quads were really sore after almost, you know, similar to what I would experience on a downhill type of race. And I think you you just get those little micro tears. And again, my legs may still have had the fatigue from Costa Rica. 
So, well, you know, that was only yeah. two weeks before. So. <laughs> did you run? Did you run it all in between? You know, I did some. Um, it was two weeks, so I did do some running, but it wasn't. Um, I'd have to look at my Strava to see what my mileage was. It wasn't anything I was concerned about. Um, I didn't want to shut it down just because you know I am building up to a hundred mile race, but right. I definitely wanted to recover after Costa Rica, and yeah, I didn't really look at yeah. I mean, I had decreased mileage. I was recovering and then looking at another run, but also considering this other run is kind of a training run if needed. It wasn't something that I had my, you know, any, my heart set. It wasn't on my calendar, just as you pointed out for, you know, however long in advance. It was like two weeks in advance. (laughs) I love it. That's awesome. (laughs) And really, who does that? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we're all, we all do stuff like that though. Very, very important question. Very serious topic around here is we seem to have um, van issues around here. In fact, we, we've we dubbed a new term called vannery because Steven and Elvis, we want to get like a really cool van that we can drive around and take to races and do all that kind of stuff. And I noticed that um, yes. you had, a, your vannery was very nice. <laughs> You, you well, guys had a, great, you. <laughs> you had a great little setup. What what was it that you yeah. guys had? So her name is Ruby and she's a 2002 Eurovan, a Westfall. Yeah. And so just as you saw, she, the top of it pops up. And so James and I had a nice little nap up there prior to the race. Um, and I moved over from Oregon, you know, what, six weeks ago um, to St. Louis. And I had her brought over and prior to that, I decided when I brought her, it was kind of this point of maybe I was going to sell her. Maybe I was oh. was going to keep her. And I decided, you know, I'm going to keep her. And so I had bamboo flooring put in. <laughs> you know, I decided no. oh, she, she needs, you we're just going to trick her up. So I just put in the bamboo flooring and, you know, there's a table on the inside and a little portable refrigerator. And yeah, it's a Westfall, yeah, 2000. It's a great vehicle, great for taking um, to places just like this. And as well as Western states is, you know, as it was just this past weekend, um, you know, Ruby's been to Western states a couple of times and it's just been a blast to have something that you can sleep in, um, spread out in, you know basically get filthy and then clean up and enjoy. So yeah, she's great for the ultra life. Well, if you ever need to sell Ruby, we, we know a good home for her. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll keep that in mind. So you know what I love about you too, Denise, is that absolutely you have very much um, what we have here at the Clark house. Nothing has a proper name to it. It all has nicknames. So I know we, so far we have Frenchy, we have Baz, we have Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We have Tiny yes, Debo. It's has, awesome. Yep, yep. Yes. Um, everything has to feel special, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, you end up developing your own kind of language. It's awesome. Let's talk about um, Costa Rica a little bit, because I find this is really, really um, interesting for a couple of reasons. One, I'd love to kind of hear, I, I know it's a really tough course, and I'd love to hear a little bit about that. But I also know it's a bit of a comeback story for you, because um, you were there I think it was two years ago and you had to take a DNF at, um, 35 K. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Something like that. (laughs) So, uh, two years ago I went to Costa Rica and, you know, I saw it and raced it, started the race as a 50 mile race or an AK and, you know, whether it's a marathon, a 50 K or a 50 miler, I mean, each one of those races, while they have your, you, you, you go into it with your own mindset, your own thought around pacing. Um, you then jump to the 100K and the 100 miler. So in my mind, in where I've been, I've done a lot of, I've done enough hundreds and enough 100Ks and enough 50s. I know when I go into a 50, it's a race. It's a it's a foot race. It's not, you know, and even though uh, Costa Rica is challenging, uh, this race had about six to 7,000 feet of climbing. So it's oh. not exactly mountainous, but um, it's the, he- the humidity yeah. and the terrain is, you know, muddy, rocky, whatever. I went into it again, thinking of foot race. I kind of blew myself up before that, you know, at the, around the 35 K I, there's a section they called the canyons. And that year they had a fire. It like burnt anything that was green and the canyons were just completely whitewashed walls. Um, and the sun just bounced right back at you. And so I got through the canyons just like a, a corpse. You know, I laid down in the shade at one point of a dead tree. <laughs> and 
honest, um, I'm a nurse and, you know, I was absolutely showing and exhibiting signs of heat exhaustion. Mm -hmm. I was scared for myself. And by the time I got to the aid station, you know, I, I couldn't get my blood pressure down. I was completely bone dry. I had stopped sweating like somewhere in the middle of the canyons that I felt were like 10 miles, but it was more like three miles. <laughs> um, and I knew I just need to call it. And so, you know, going that did and having the support of the race director and so many people behind me and not finishing it at the 35 K um, I left that race going, okay, there's, there's some lessons. Anytime you fail at something, it's a, there's an opportunity. And so the race, um, director invited me back this year and I joyous with the thought of going back and experiencing and respecting something with a little bit more than what, um, you know, taking the learnings basically back to the same exact course. And so when I went there, you know, they had, they didn't, they weren't having the heat that we had. So we had record heat the year I was there with the humidity. This time they've been having a ton of rain. And so they had record high humidity oh. um, and it was warm. It wasn't not that it wasn't hot. It wasn't as hot. We had some clouds. We didn't have any rain. Um, but that being said, I went in with a different set, was able to just, in the thought being, just take care of myself, um, be patient. Um, don't, don't approach it as a foot race. This is more of a, you know, a chess game, you know, there's, you need to be strategic. And so, you know, I'm typically pretty good about running my own race. I went out and, you know, I didn't mind being fifth female by the first aid station. And by, you know, I don't know, mile 13 or 14, I had passed the first gal. It was a little sad to be in the lead at that point, but (laughs) one of those, you know, I'm still doing what I need to do to take care of myself. And I'm going to just do that through the end. So, yeah, you know, I came back and it I, it just, it was like textbook perfect. You know, I did exactly what my plan was and it worked. So That's I was incredibly pleased with that. That's awesome. Did you go in with the thoughts of winning or was it just to go in and, and do your own thing and, and see kind of how it played out? You know, it was one of those, you, when you DNF a race, you have thoughts of wanting to come back and, you know, do something different. I was more, um, my goal was definitely to take care of myself and have a good race. If it played in my favor and I won, that'd be even better. Um, there was a gentleman there who's the director of the North Face Challenges. And last two years ago, he saw me DNF and he asked me that same exact question. I was like, Nick, here's the thing. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to take care of myself. And I'm going to get to the finish line and then we'll see how it goes, <laughs> you know, wherever that places me. And he's like, this sounds like a good plan. He saw me when I came through the canyons and he's like, you know, thumbs up, spot on, no. exactly what you need to be doing, and, <laughs> you know, and it, and it worked, it played out well. I want to say the, I've DNF a hundred mile race, the hurt 100 and kind of used the same strategy and was fortunate to come back the following year and win it so it was kind of one that of was those, yeah i was just gonna i was just okay. thinking too yeah you dnf a race and you come back and win it does that like negate the fact that you dnf a race i don't know but i, I vote for does, yes I, you know I, I would like to but i think the important thing is if you can take all of those learnings away and draw from all of the areas that you weren't quite successful um and a lot goes into it whether it's mental physical the conditions blah 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 and you can use it to your advantage on the same race course, then there you have it. So yeah, so I was, yeah, I was pleased with that. And the race, the race is tough. Um, it, it's the humidity and the heat that really gets you. Um, there's enough water crossings that make it nice. They've got a ton of aid stations. So I would, you know, the plug to this race director is just, oh my gosh, super well supported. You get to practice your Spanish. <laughs> um, there's, you know, again, the aid stations every, I want to say the furthest part were, um, maybe four miles. And so when you have heat and humidity, it's nice to have the aid stations close together. I think the 50 mile or 80 K distance had 13 aid stations. Oh, so wow. you can take care of yourself. You just need to do it and know how to do it. So That's awesome. how do you do? You, do you do heat training? I live in St. Louis now. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, you know, honestly, when I was in uh, Oregon, I would use a sauna before with, um, because Ben does not historically see um, those high temps. It seems like right after Western States and everybody gets the heat wave, or at least in Oregon, they get the heat wave. So I've used the hot sauna. I've done the Bikram yoga uh, from for where I, I don't know, I guess for the the heat part of the races I've experienced recently. 
Um, it's more, you know, St. Louis is certainly warm enough and I'm using the humidity there. And I was there a couple of weeks before, you know, Costa Rica, as well as for ruts, which wasn't terribly humid, but it worked out okay. But no, the heat training, eh, if I'm in an area that it's occurring, great. If it's not, I'll use the sauna. Oh, that's great. Did you, did you follow How Western much? States? Oh, you know what? I've, I've got to get better about heat training, but I don't have anything kind of on my calendar, anything coming up right now that really warrants it. Um, you know, big, big bucket goals down the line. I'd love to do, you know, like bad water, um, something like that, which I know at that point, (laughs) yeah, that's like bucket. I don't know if I'll ever get to that point, but you know, you got to dream big. And so it's, it's out there. I'm thinking, you know, you know, long, long, long ways away. So that's why I'm always kind of curious how, how people train for, for that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, you know, and I don't know that you have to, you know, I think you just make, you can find it. I mean, if you don't live in a hot place, use the saunas. You know, if it's not the sauna, Bikram yoga is an amazing way to combine some other, you know, if not everybody does yoga. I've got a love-hate relationship with yoga, especially Bikram yoga, but it's greatly <laughs> beneficial. I find it hugely beneficial. I'm 47. I'm not one of those young kids out there. So, you know, I mean, you just find what, what things you put in place for whatever race, whether it's the heat or the mountains or, you know, the flat race or even a looped course. So, well, yeah. And I saw because you're training for Vermont and, uh, um, I was following you, I think on, I think you made notes. It was on Strava or one of the socials about, um, how you're doing some of the climbs on the treadmill. Yes. <laughs> so you know, people are surprised. Um, Vermont, you know, I raced the Grand Slam, I want to say in 2014. Um, and when I went into Vermont, I had a strained calf. And so while I was injured, I still kind of shuffled through the race just to keep the slam going. Um, but it's rolling hills. And when they say relentless rolling hills, it is exactly that. So um, in St. Louis, there are there are places you can go um, for the hill climbing. I'm still kind of learning the different names of the areas, but a tried and true <laughs> is a weighted vest on a treadmill. How how much um, weight do you have on the vest? You know, I was thinking it's probably more like 70 to 20. <laughs> um, I don't have a scale. And I, as I only moved, I put all the extra weights in it. So it's probably closer to 20. But typically, it's like I had it a little bit lighter. So I want to say typically, I, I had it at 50. And doing um, like Ultra Trail du Mont Blanc, there's a ton of mountains to climb. And, it, you know, the only way that I could train for something like that, even in Bend, Oregon, where you're surrounded, um, that time of year, there's still snow, there's different things that are impeding your ability to go as high as you want. Um, the weighted vest just for hiking and climbing is a great way to strengthen the muscle. And as far as the downhill, you do need to have the downhill strength also, but um, strengthening the quads, you know, you can even just a recovery run or a recovery walk. You can choose to put the weighted vest on and just go for a walk. I would still kind of consider that a recovery, but you're still doing it. And so kind of a rest day, but not really, <laughs> but it's not, it's not stressing. It's not stressing the, the muscle to the point that you can't, you don't feel the benefits of having that day um, using that type of therapy. Yeah. I don't, I'm not so sure that running with a 20 pound vest for me would be considered no, a rest I wouldn't day. Recommend that. No, 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 you're right. <laughs> I, 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 you're right. Some of us are mortal you're over here. Didn't you? With it. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. I know, you know, and uh, James and I are just starting this coaching business. And so he's, and he's, um, let's see here. What, what are you thinking? I'm like, no, no, this is good stuff. This I, I'm telling you, um, he's my, he's my little cake. Not really, but he is. <laughs> no, <laughs> he's great. He's always thing that I try or anything that I'm doing. What are you doing? Oh, well, I want to do that. And we both went to Croatia this past year. And so I put together his training plan. Unfortunately, he came up with a little bit of a hip um, issue for a little while. So he took some time off, but he still completed the race. And it was just, you know, it's great to see this, this guy that you would typically see as James has done, you know, Arkansas Traveler. Um, he, he did Rocky Raccoon. He's done the long distance, just hasn't done the mountainous. And so, you know, working with him, AKA coaching him to get mm-hmm. him to do this run. Um, oh, it was amazing. He, you know, he embraced everything that I gave him. He was like full in and, you know, somebody who has a passion for ultra running as well as a passion for being challenged. If you give them a good plan, they will. Oh my gosh. I mean, he just executed it. 
unbelievably well at that race. And and he was, you know, so full of smiles at the end. I mean, to see him come through to the finish line without a ball. And no, I didn't have a weighted vest on him when he came to the finish line. Um, <laughs> but uh, if you took off the pack, it probably felt like just where the weighted vest training is helpful. Oh, yeah, that's a good point, too. When you're was um, yeah. how was the Croatia? How far was that one? It's in 70K. So it's like 105, 104 miles. And so you have to carry, there's just like um, UTMB, required gear that you have to carry, yep. um, plus your fluid and some calories. Um, James, you know, I had him using poles, which became his new best friend. You know, there's different things that you are you have to have. And you take that pack off at the end of the day and you're just like, that's a solid amount of weight to be carrying. <laughs> Not 15 wanna... pounds, but still, it's much more than, you know, what you would typically. Oh, sure. And, you know, over that distance, that's. It gets heavier and heavier, even when it's getting lighter and lighter. Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> you know, when I did UTMB, I took my pack off at the end to put on a dry shirt. And then I picked my pack back up and I'm like, uh, somebody else carry this. <laughs> <laughs> I finished the race running with it. <laughs> so yeah, I'm done. Yeah. Now I want to go back to something because you kind of just glossed over something about, oh yeah, back in 2014, I, I um, did the Grand Slam. You know, kind of like it was, ah, you know, no big deal. First, explain what, um, what for people who don't know what the Grand Slam is. The Grand Slam is um, four 100 milers, and they're the four oldest hundred, um, and they're all within a 10 week period of time. So it starts with Western states, then a couple weeks later is Vermont, then maybe three weeks later is Leadville. And a couple of weeks later, um, the Wasatch 100. And so, yeah. so yeah, that's the Grand Slam. Yeah. So, you know, no big deal. And you talk yeah, about how, yeah. yeah so, and I kind of did it with a calf strain. So, you know, no big deal. And, oh yeah, in the past 30 years, only 49 women have completed it. And you're the <laughs> f- fourth fastest in, um, fourth fastest woman in history. But, you know, no big deal, right? But yeah, 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 you know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Crystal. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. So the, yeah, you know, and I had, you know, my goal was, you know, I was chasing after Chrissy Mel's time. I'm like, you know what? I think I can challenge that. And so I ran Western States, had a great time there, came away feeling great, didn't have any issues. I want to say it was three weeks between Western and Vermont. And two weeks later, I'm volunteering at the Mount Hood 50 miler, the PCT 50. And I'm supposed to sweep. And so I'm trotting out to where I needed to start. And something just like stung me in my calf. And it, yeah, I just completely strained my calf trotting out to on a 50 miler. Um, Took that following week off, flew out to Vermont, had it taped, did all the therapies I could do. And within the first mile of Vermont, it pulled again. And I knew it wasn't going to behave. It was not gone. And so I shed a few tears and said, hmm, well, I've already invested everything into uh, Leadville and Wasatch. And at that point, I decided if I actually tear the muscle, then I'll be done. And that's the decision I chose to make. Um, if I didn't tear it, then I would get through to the finish line and I would do what I needed to do and continue to move forward if I could. And so I just readjusted my goals and fortunately was able to shuffle my way through a hundred miles and then um, took care of myself at Leadville. Um, I wasn't necessarily feeling it, but I didn't want to race Leadville and hurt myself. And then Wasatch, I was just completely blessed. Um, I was recovered. I was ready to race. My body was feeling good and I was able to get a sub 24 hour uh, crimson cheetah belt buckle from Wasatch. Well, that's um, so my grand slam. <laughs> <laughs> I did not get Chrissy Mel's time, but that's okay. Oh. <laughs> at that point, you know, you just re- you reassess and take a look at what, you know, deal with what you got to deal with on whatever given day and move forward. So that's, that's awesome. I have a friend who's looking to do the kind of the smaller version of it, the Midwest Grand Slam next year. And he was trying to drag, he was trying to drag me into it, which I, I'm so not ready for that. But what kind of advice would you give? to someone looking to do something like that? You know, um, besides the fact that I've just started coaching, check out my uh, tinydebo.com. I would say if someone's doing a grand slam, first, you know, identify their goal. What are they expecting or wanting out of it? And to be realistic with those goals, meaning um, if they're looking for a finish, they're looking to whatever it may take into consideration things they have going on in their life. 
and find that balance, make sure they have the support of those around them that need to support them because they can't do it themselves. And the people that do support them are the energy them. All of those races, when it comes to the training, I would say they just need, you need to be consistent. Um, and honestly, once you have a base, you don't have to do much beach race. You just need, I had nothing going on between each one of those races training wise. Except, you know, with the calf strain, it was like, okay, now I was in therapy, therapy. But oh. it was like, okay, I just need to take care of myself. There's no real running involved because if you run 100 two weeks later, you're going to still be able to run 100. And three weeks later from that, you're still going to be able to run 100. Right. <laughs> the goal is recover. You know, you need to taper. And it's, it's just maintaining at that point because all of your training up until the first race is going to hold you through. to. There's no training that needs to be done. And be, so there you have it. Makes sense. Sounds easy. Piece of cake. No, exactly. <laughs> Piece of cake. Yeah. No. Easy peasy. <laughs> yeah. No, I think have that's fun. all. <laughs> but no, seriously, you have your support structure in place. That's you a know, really like, important. There's going to be some tears, gonna be some tears shed and somebody's going to need to hold your hand. <laughs> yeah. That's a really, and unfortunately, really. Unfortunately. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Something else I wanted to, before we run out of time too, I really want to know last, um, last fall, the, um, you outright won Chimera. And I want to hear about that. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. That was so much fun. <laughs> and let so me just say that not are... only did you outright win it, it was you won it by 45 minutes, over 45 minutes, and you were the only person to go sub 24 that year too. Thank you for that. Yes, it was a great feeling. Um, I had, Chimera came up on my calendar only because I was like, meh, you know, I quit my job. I hit a little life reset button, quit my job. <laughs> And then I was like, okay, well, you know, I've been seizing all of this training in while working 10 hour days. I was in hospital administration, um, 10 hour days, five days a week. And I realized, you know, it's like, okay, I can just, I can just train. So I should probably run a hundred, hence Chimera. And then when Chimera came, I was a maniac. I mean, if you were to talk to James, I spoke with him the night before the race and I was, I don't think I'm prepared. I'm not focused. I'm not this, that, and the other. And what I realized was going up to the race is any other race I had on my calendar, I had to be completely intentional with all of my training. It had to be well thought out. It had to be methodical, had to be on the calendar. And for Chimera, I was just running because I was having fun. I was working out and having fun. But it was like, once it came down to the race, I was like, hi, am I ready? Am I prepared? I don't feel like I've been focused. And so oddly enough, I was plenty trained up for the race, but I didn't feel it because I didn't have that external pressure of a job that had me crunching the hours of the day, right? Like everybody uh, does. Yeah. And if you're, yeah, you know, you, you've got your, whether you have children, the job, you know, those external things that are drawing your attention and here you are. Okay. So when can I school? So this one didn't have any of that, did the training and was, um, you know, pleasantly surprised after I don't know, 25 <laughs> ish miles. I came into an aid station and um, the race director for San Diego 100, Scotty Mills, he's like, you know, he was at the aid station. He's like, Denise, a guy in the lead. Yeah, I think you're going to catch him before you get to the next. And I did. Oh, so then wow. it was another one of those, okay, wow, I'm in the lead this race. And it's only 25 ish, 30 miles in. How do you feel about that? <laughs> yeah. And how do you, do you deal with that? that? What do you do? I don't know, yeah, because that's still, still, you still have three quarters of the race. I mean, you still have like another 75 oh, no, exactly. miles to go. Exactly right. And so, you know, I'm one of those racers that I like to run my own race. I'm like, okay, well, here you have it. So, you know, just kept running. And um, I had a friend who was crewing me and she was going to pace me for the last 15 miles. So I'm like, okay, I've got 85 miles before I have sand. Let's see how it goes. And by the time it's a mile eight, ish like okay seen enough guys there's chimera has enough um out and backs and different areas refilled um then i was just like okay well the guys behind me they keep swapping spots but nobody seems to be gaining on me and so um you know i'm not going to run this race in the lead this far and not me and so i came into like mile 85 and this was a long out and back so i could see the next guy or i obviously the next guy behind me yeah. and he was at that point, you know, 20 minutes, it was an out and back. So 40 minutes ish behind me with 15 to go. And so I was like, because my legs still felt good. <laughs> you know, it's like, I knew I could still race it. And at that point I was just like, Oh my gosh, what a crazy feeling. And honestly, Rock Horton, there's runners who may know this guy. He's been out around the, you know, 
ultra running scene forever. But Rock Horton, he sent me an email after the race. It was so sweet. It was just very simple. He's like, Denise, I heard you made a lot of boys cry in California this past weekend. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Aw, sorry to the boys out there, but you know, sorry, not sorry. It feels good. Just to, yeah, sorry, but not. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so it was an incredible feeling. That's awesome. Um, I want to talk a little bit about longevity because this is kind of a sport where you know people can kind of burn out pretty quick. Um, but you you've been going for about ten years, and it's it's fun because you can go on to um, you know ultra sign up and and see. Your first race was a 50K back in 2008, which you won. <laughs> I know, right? And then here you are almost 10 years later, <laughs> and the past two races you've won. Um, how do you, I mean, which, what's your key for, for staying healthy? What do you do? You know, I won't lie. I have had in last year after I finished Croatia, um, I had raced into Western States and unfortunately wasn't able to use that ticket. Um, I had a psoas in, um, so what's a psoas injury? It's a groin injury and it just took forever. It was, ten, it was um, an itis of the psoas or the groin. Um, you know, I would say though, I've been fortunate. Um, I, I don't know. I don't, that's a great question. I think I have, I have a good balance physically. You know, I do enough strength training as well as my running. Um, while I might have high mileage, they're not all high. You look at my Strava and, you know, but up like this week, this past week, I hit 85. And with Vermont coming up, typically I'd want to see 90 to 100 a week of something like that. But knowing I just finished running ruts, the run under the stars for 66. And two weeks before that, I hit a 50 miler. I'm like, no, I'm good. I hit 85 last week. This week I'm going to hit, I'll keep it. I'll drop it back down because my legs are feeling a little tired. So I I guess I just listen to my body. Um, I think the trail running is a great way to take care of your body. Um, It's that full, you know, 100% core, the upper body, the legs, everything's engaged when you're running on the trail. Um, It's not, it's not marathon running. And I did uh, many, many years. You know, I think, you know, for myself at 47, how am I staying healthy, maintaining, you know, my ability to stay competitive is just the balance. You know, it's like, I feel like I take care of my, my nutrition. I take care of my physical strength, not just my legs. And I respect um, my age. (laughs) That's tough. I'm okay. If I'm tired, I'm okay with taking the day off. Um, If I feel like there's something going on, I'm okay with taking care of. So, you know, it's just, just respecting all of those oh so important things. I don't, I don't know how else to say it. No, that makes I sense. So how, I, how I'm finding. So have you always been self coach? Um, you know, I have, um, when I did my first 100, um, I hired AJW as a coach, Andy Jones, Andy Jones Wilkins. Um, and then at another point I thought I needed a little bit more, I just needed a little more than, I think sometimes it's not even that I didn't have the knowledge to get myself there, but it's fun to have somebody put accountability. So it's not that, Crystal, you couldn't put together your own training plan, but if I were to put a training plan together and I say, Crystal, I want you to get that to me every week and we're going to have a conversation at the end of the week and we're going to check in and you're going to feel a little pressure. Yeah. You know, I think there's, that's where I have, hired a coach after that, just to just kind of mix it up a little bit for me, give me something more than what I was doing for myself. And so um, Ian Torrance, um, he works with uh, McMillan Running. And Mm -hmm. so his group I used for a little while. And so I have had external influence just to give me more insight as well as um, kind of, you know, that accountability piece at different with my, I guess, career at this point. And that's where now I'm like, you know, I'm feeling pretty good about what I have. I feel very capable and I have people just reach out and say, hey, Denise, what do you think? It's like, you know, working with James, just like, you know, Denise, I think you really have a talent here. You have a passion. So, and so now I'm super excited. I'm looking at coaching and, you know, so I think this is something that I can give to other runners. And, you know, it's not something that I would have thought 10 years ago, but 10 years later running just like, again, I think people do need accountability. If they can't hold it for themselves, it's fun to have somebody else tell you what to do if nothing else. Then you're just like, okay, I don't even have to think about this. I just oh, need I to agree. follow their plan. And I think it's going to get me there. Um, as well as having someone who can take in some of the experiences of what you're going through, whether it's a hundred or a series of 
uh, you know, it's, oh my gosh, there's so much talent out there. And I'm just excited that I know I have a little bit of some that I could show. So. Just a little. I think I think you have about you know, <laughs> what you have in your pinkies about what I have in all of me. So. <laughs> Oh no, but it's like, and I just love it. I love it. I'm working with um, an athlete in St. Louis. And I'm just like, I just want to like, oh, I just need to sit down with her. I just need to just like give her all of this stuff. I'm like, okay, come on. Here's what we need to do. <laughs> oh, that's so exciting. It's just like, yeah, it is exciting. So what's still left on your bucket list? You know, I haven't gotten into hard rock. So hard rock on my bucket list. I, while I, you know, I still, oh, so this year I tried to race into Western States and I was not successful. So there you have it. I have had successful and I haven't had successful race. So I'm still like, you know, I know I can go under 20 hours at Western States. I was going to say from some of the stuff that I've read and seen on you, I feel like you have some unfinished business there. I do. I do. So, you know, I'm like, okay, that's still there, but I'm telling you, everybody is getting younger and faster. (laughs) <laughs> and I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. But I'm like, leave me a little spot, just one little spot. That's all I need. So in certain states, I still have a passion for hard rock. I'm interested in getting it. Um, James just, um, he did Croatia and completed getting the points he needed to do Trail du Mont Blanc. Ooh. And so I'm excited to go back there and race it again. Um, when I raced it, I was hoping to break top 10 and I was 14. And now I'm like, no, I know I can do better than that. I know I can. And, you know, even while I'm getting older, I, it's, I'm getting more experienced and I'm getting definitely more passionate and smarter and all of those other things that play into it besides youth and um, fearless downhill ability. <laughs> so, you know, that's yeah. true talent. That is the downhill. Oh. I, you know, until you get out there, you don't realize how hard going down a hill is. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. I mean, people, you should slow down. You could break bones. I work in the operating room. I know these things. <laughs> <laughs> But no. So honestly, um, I think I'd like to do some more international races. And so I, while I wouldn't necessarily be able to list them off, I mean, I love the whole Ultra Trail World Tour, you know, Mount Fuji, you know, those types of races. Um, the sky running ones, again, probably going to stay away from just the downhill part. <laughs> but I love the idea of just traveling, taking my passion to the mountains. So or anywhere that I, it, they take me. Oh, love it. I've got a big bucket list. It's one of those ones that just keeps growing. Go ahead, throw something at me. I'll add it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I love, you know, just last minute things of, hey, let's go do this crazy thing around a horse track. Great. I'm in. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Oh, my gosh. So I was but talking crazy to I, ultra runner. Yeah, I know. We're all that's that's why uh, our group here were we're trouble for each other because we keep talking each other into crazy things. Oh, right. How about going to Patagonia? Well, that race looks like fun. I really like to freeze to death, but <laughs> oh, but hey, you can do no, it. Seriously, race. I mean, you know, whether their first year's a, you know, it's important to look to see how they've done the first couple of years before you just jump all in. Um, but yeah, no. <laughs> There's, there's some amazing places that you can go to run. And what a great way to see the countryside. I mean, truly. Just, oh, oh absolutely. I was just having a conversation about that with somebody the other day, talking about doing um, a marathon, like traveling and doing the 50 states, doing a marathon versus doing an ultra. I'm like, in an ultra, you just see everything in just such a different way than a road marathon. And it's just, you can't, you can't even describe the difference. Yeah. And it's not to negate. It's just a different type of passion. (laughs) It is. It's different different. because I mean, we've all done both and it is, it is different, but it's just, you see these areas that you would never otherwise, you know, probably venture to. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. And it's just so, oh my God, it's just amazing. And when I say that, I think, you know, um, running in Europe, it's so spectacular. In the year I ran it, we just had crazy blue skies, full moon. You know, it's just one of those epic runs where you're just, your jaw, not that maybe it was because I was trying to breathe, but your jaw is just hanging. You know, you're just like, oh my gosh, everything's amazing. <laughs> oh. um, before we let you go, because we're, we're starting to run long on time here. I, I've saved the last question. One of the last questions um, actually comes from my son, who's 10. And so I always like to tell him all these it. things because um, he loves, you know, hearing about my ventures and stuff like that. And he tells his friends and he and his friends are like, there's no way somebody can run 50 miles. There's no way somebody can run 100 miles. So I was telling him about all the stuff that you had done. And and so he he had a question for you. And, and these are in his words. So he wondered, since you are, quote, so freaking amazing, he wants to know what inspires you? What a sweetheart. What a sweetheart. 
Um, so, and Crystal, what an amazing role model you are. Seriously, what an incredible thing to be providing this 10 year old son, like the exposure that you're able to provide him. Um, yeah. So what inspired, um, I have, I have a brother with Lou Gehrig's, also known as ALS, um, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. And he has been in a wheelchair and almost 100% dependent on others for almost 18. Um, and so the first thing that inspires me is just the ability to do what I can do because my body allows it and it's a gift. Love it. That's it. Oh, um, that's it's one of those. Whew, how how fortunate, even in our work, when we're suffering at a very worst in a race, how fortunate are we to suffer like that? Because there's so many people that don't have um don't have that. They don't have that choice. And so um yeah, there's there's where I find my inspiration. It's not to say that there aren't days that you have your own pity parties and we all have them, but um at the end of the day, that's what I reflect on and that's what, you know, when I'm having at the darkest hours and I'll have them in the middle of ultras. It's you know, try to reflect and try to you signed up for it. And you signed up for it because you have the ability. Um, that's that's my inspiration. Your ten year old son, it's looking around at those people who are here have who don't have what you have, just treasure, you know, just, you know, be a little more. It's not a given. It's not a given. It's a gift. It can be taken anytime. I love so. that. I love that. And I think he'll really appreciate that. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so where, how can everybody follow you and, and give your website out again about coaching and all that so people can get in touch with you? Um, so the coaching website is www.tinydebo.com. And yeah, it's, it's tiny Debo coaching. Um, I want to, yeah. So the tiny Debo.com is where they can email or that's the website. Um, and then I have another email, but the dot com will get them to the website. Wonderful. And across um, social, you're, you're pretty much either tiny D or tiny Debo, um, on like yes, Instagram and Strava. Um, and... <laughs> Instagram is, yes, tiny Debo. And, you know, it's kind of funny because, uh, Dylan Bowman is Debo. And I remember one year, it's like I was going to Western States and there's Debo S and Debo M. And I'm like, so John Medinger was arranging this group together, get together, Debo M, Debo F. And I'm like, Debo M, but Dylan Bowman, of course, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's not just me. Oh. Anyways, yes, a tiny Debo is typically where you can Instagram and find me. So. Wonderful. We'll make but, sure to have um, links to all of that. Yeah. Yes. And I'll get it. So thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for taking time and hanging out with us tonight, Denise. I really, really appreciate it. And it's, it was no, so too, great to talk this to you. This was a blast. This was a great time. So thank you so much for having me on your show. And yeah, I've enjoyed it. What a, yeah. So thank you. Thank you. And thank you the rest of the team, Alex and Steven. Andy and Steven. Or Andy and Steven. Sorry. I'm like, wait, it wasn't Alex. Wait, that's Andy. all right. So yeah, that's thanks, okay. thanks guys, even though you weren't invited. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for letting us take over. We painted yeah, everything right. pink while you were gone. Hope you like it. Uh, so I want to thank everybody for listening tonight. Just remind everybody, you can visit our website, heartlandrunning.com. We'll have the show notes there and we'll have all the links to everything, um, ways to get in touch with Denise. Also, be sure to check us out on Facebook. We have the um, business page, which is fine, but you want to check out the social group um, where that's all the fun will happen. And remember, we are going to be capping that. So get in while you can. Also, if you have any comments or gear reviews or anything you want to get in touch, you can call us on our voicemail. It's 417-319-1060. And of course, if you like the show, be sure to tell a friend and share it. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time. 